Facebook executive Benny Thomas was secretly recorded by Project Veritas and he addressed some of tech's monopoly issues. Instagram, Facebook, Messenger, Oculus, um, WhatsApp, they all need to be separate companies. It's too much power when they're all one to one. It, it needs to be broken up the way the telecom companies were broken up and the oil companies were broken up. But better than that because those guys just came back together pretty soon after that and I hope we've learned from that. But that's, that's really the one thing as you said. I would break it up and I would remove Zuck as the CEO. Wow. Pretty strong words there. Democratic strategist Roger Fisk and Senior Director of Policy at the Conservative Partnership Institute, Rachel Bovar. They join us now to discuss. Rachel, let me start with you. You do a lot of work on tech monopoly issues. Pretty stark admission there from global planning lead of Facebook whenever he's talking about the integration of all of these different different disparate products under the Facebook brand. What does it tell us when one of their own executives is saying this? I mean, not out loud, but well, out loud, but not you know necessarily for public consumption. Uh, that our laws need to catch up yeah. um, because, look, we have antitrust laws for a reason. Um, it is, you know, to prevent anti-competitive behavior, to prevent the durability of a monopoly like Facebook, like Google. And we've just seen completely lax enforcement over the last, you know, 10, 15 years to the point where you've had close to 750 mergers and acquisitions take place in the digital space without any review by the enforcement agencies. We have a problem. And when the people who are working for those companies admit it, they're all just laughing at us. And that should not be happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Roger, we should say like Project Veritas, extraordinarily sketchy. I've been caught like editing, manipulating all that stuff in the past. However, I mean, this this was chaired out by Ken Vogel, a New York Times reporter. And it seems like it would be hard to kind of piece this together and edit it and cut it in together. So it does appear uh, legitimate. But I just want to put out there that, look, it's Project Veritas. So take it all with a grain of salt. However, what did you make of these comments? Well, first off, good morning. Thanks so much for having me. Um, It is important because, for example, that person could have said, you could make a great case for, and then Uh fill in the blank. Um, I remember the last time that I was on the show, we talked about a reporter who tried to truthfully report a story that involved the N-word, and then that reporter yes. was uh, was penalized for trying to be honest. So it's important to know the context of these things. Um, my my reluctance, and first off, I'm essentially kind of a, 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 a absolutist when it comes to the, the freedom and liberty aspects of this, but we, I agree with Rachel in that the, we have these antitrust laws for a reason. The reluctance for me comes in when you see something like the Google CEO testifying in front of Congress, and when you hear what their what some of these members of Congress's perceptions of what data and the internet are, it's essentially like handling, you know, or handing a like a Rubik's cube to like a baby chimp. I would not want these folks yeah. deciding like what the what the tech space looks like. <laughs> I think there's two things that we could do in the short term, and I have some friends in Europe that are working on the personal data issue. One is to make data something that someone owns so that we so that we get into the driver's seat of exactly what happens with our data and two would be making the terms and conditions when you sign up for a free email address or anything else much more clear and reduced down to bullet points of exactly what you're empowering that service or or that email account to do with your data and basically empower the consumer to go out there um, because I don't know that Congress necessarily has even a kind of a generational kind of understanding yeah. that would equip them with the ability to to do this. But I agree with Rachel as well that we do have laws on the books and they're for a reason. And these situations should be put under a microscope. And we should also try to engage the American people so that they truly understand how much their digital world is being manipulated. What do you think of Rachel? Because it's not a, it's not an unfair point, even though I do. I'll always err on the side of democracy rather than not. But whenever we look at, you know, some of these, my favorite one was like, why do my campaign emails go to the junk inbox, which was actually asked within the chamber? How do you get around that one? I mean, do you really want these people making the decision? Unbelievable. Uh, Like, well, completely fair point. And I actually think Roger's completely right about, you know, data portability, data privacy, data ownership. That should be baseline, I think. And we don't have that right now in America. We need a policy scheme for that. But I think when it comes to antitrust, we aren't relying on Congress for enforcement. Mm-hmm. Antitrust isn't about you know the, the aspects of the digital technology space. It's partly about that, but it's about market power. It's about market dominance. 
And I think those tests have been met. Those thresholds have been met. And I think if you're seeing anti-competitive behavior, thankfully, we don't need, you know, digital technology experts, you know, clunking up the space. We just need economists to say, yes, uh, there's a case to be made here. The Department of Justice has made it very eloquently against Google, very clearly that Google's engaging in anti-competitive behavior, that there is no marketplace in tech and that we need our law enforcement to step in and say, oh, do we want a free market? Because then we need our laws to be able to you know, create the parameters so one exists. And that's mm-hmm. what antitrust is really about. So and there's Rachel, two Yeah. And what have you made of some of the Biden administration um, nominees and appointees that would be relevant to this issue? So I am encouraged um, by Biden's appointment of, you know, Lena Khan uh, to the FTC, Rohit Chopper going to the CFPB. He is taking pretty aggressive stances, uh, you know, people who would upend the apple cart, upend the consensus that exists even from the Obama era. I mean, you saw really lax enforcement during the Obama years. Um, the tech titans are terrified of somebody like Lena Khan. Now, mm-hmm. that said, we're still waiting for appointments, um, you know, in the Justice Department on the you know antitrust enforcement side. And there's a number of progressive groups. And I think conservatives as well will come out and say, look, you cannot appoint someone who has ties or has worked for these big tech titans. They should not be allowed to buy the rules that govern them yeah. in this space. Yeah, I think it's really, really important. Thanks, guys, for joining us. Really interesting topic. Thanks. Appreciate you both. Thank you. Thank you. More rising for you after this.